Did you know that a third of all the ETH being staked on Ethereum's beacon chain is coming from a single protocol? This protocol is Lido Finance, and though there have been many concerns about its massive ETH stake, there's much more to this crypto project than meets the eye. Today, I'm going to tell you everything you need to know about Lido Finance and why it could have huge implications for not just Ethereum, but potentially every proof of stake cryptocurrency on the market. Well, Lido Finance is a liquid staking protocol. In plain English, it lets you stake proof of stake cryptocurrencies without having to lock them up, meaning you can trade them freely while still staking. The short explanation of how this works is that when you stake your cryptocurrency through Lido Finance, the protocol gives you a tradable token that acts as a sort of receipt for the crypto you staked. So, in the case of Ethereum, when you stake ETH on the beacon chain through Lido Finance, the protocol gives you a token called staked ETH or ST ETH, which mirrors the price of ETH and can be freely traded. Now, ST ETH maintains its price peg in three ways. The first is through arbitrage, wherein rational traders buy ST ETH when it drops below the price of ETH, since it can be redeemed for actual ETH in the future. The second way ST ETH maintains its peg is through liquidity mining, wherein the Lido DAO provides additional rewards to anyone providing liquidity for trading pairs between ETH and ST ETH. The third way ST ETH maintains its peg is through the organic demand for ST ETH. Since ST ETH earns staking rewards in real time, it's the ideal collateral for borrowing protocols like Aave and MakerDAO. However, the fact that ST ETH earns staking rewards in real time means its value changes, and this makes it incompatible with certain DeFi protocols, namely decentralized exchanges like Uniswap. This is why there's a second ST ETH token called Wrapped ST ETH or WST ETH, which essentially makes it possible for your ST ETH to continue increasing in value while maintaining a fixed price for DEX trading. Besides Ethereum's beacon chain, Lido Finance currently supports Solana, Kusama, and Polygon. It's also in the process of adding support for Polkadot. Now, as I mentioned in the introduction, Lido Finance is staking around a third of all the ETH on Ethereum's beacon chain, an amount that's worth well over $8 billion. This is for a few reasons. First, becoming a validator on Ethereum's beacon chain requires 32 ETH, which most people can't afford, and delegation is technically not possible. Second, becoming a validator on Ethereum's beacon chain requires technical knowledge, as well as 24-7 monitoring, because validators risk losing some of their ETH if they go offline or fail to upgrade on time. And third, becoming a validator on Ethereum's beacon chain requires locking up the aforementioned ETH until Ethereum completes its transition from proof-of-work to proof-of-stake. Even then, withdrawals of staked ETH may not be allowed right away. And in a recent interview, Ethereum enthusiast Anthony Sassano revealed validators may be stuck waiting for six months. It should come as no surprise then that so much ETH is being staked in a liquid way, and why the demand for liquid staking is much higher for Ethereum compared to other proof-of-stake cryptos. If you're wondering why everyone is flocking to Lido Finance for liquid staking as opposed to, say, centralized exchanges, it all has to do with convenience and security. For starters, liquid staking on Lido Finance doesn't require KYC, and the protocol is therefore accessible to anyone with an internet connection, save for a few exceptions. More about that later. When you stake ETH through Lido Finance, a set of audited smart contracts automatically distributes this ETH to a set of 22 validators on Ethereum's beacon chain that were vetted by the Lido DAO. Now, it's important to note that the Lido community is actively onboarding new beacon chain validators. This is why Lido Finance having a third of all the ETH staked isn't necessarily a cause for concern. As a reward for sharing their staking infrastructure, these beacon chain validators earn 5% of the staking rewards from all the ETH that's being delegated to them by Lido Finance. Another 5% of the staking rewards go to the Lido DAO treasury, which can be used for grants for new Lido Finance deployments or even protocol insurance if a Lido Finance affiliated validator is slashed. 
The remaining 90% goes to ST ETH holders, hence why staking rewards for ETH on Lido Finance are 4% versus the 4.4% that you get if you stake directly on the Beacon Chain. LDO is an ERC20 token on the Ethereum blockchain with a maximum supply of 1 billion, the entirety of which was minted at Genesis. LDO's use cases are currently limited to voting in the Lido DAO. Now, as per the blog post announcing the LDO token, around 36% of its supply went to the Lido DAO treasury, around 22% went to investors, 6.5% went to early validators and signature holders, more about them later, 20% went to the early developers of Lido Finance, and 15% went to the founders and future employees. As per an article about the LDO token, Overall, I think Lido is in a good place right now, and they don't have too much to worry about. But in terms of competitive advantage, I'm giving them a 6 out of 10. All right, it's time for my final verdict, and I'm giving them a 7 out of 10. I think Lido is super valuable, and I wouldn't hesitate to use it myself.